is happening, party people? Welcome back to another episode of Inside the Desert Oasis Room. We are on a field trip today at the Hollywood Heritage Museum, and we are here for uh, it's a tiki lecture, a tiki presentation today about the Enchanted Tiki Room and another sneak peek of the Dawn of Tiki and a Q&A session. But what's special is we are at the Hollywood Heritage Museum and we're gonna go look at some Hollywood relics inside and we'll try to learn a little bit about this historic building. All right, so let's go in and check it out. Inside the Hollywood Heritage Museum, and this really great model in here. And another model. I really enjoy looking at models, uh, miniatures. So this is a model of Paramount Productions, it looks like. Look at that, it almost looks like the clock tower <laughs> from Back to the Future. And there's the Western Town. And check this out, like you can see the facades back there. How they just make them as facades. And our sound stages. All right, what's this one? Yeah, that's pretty cool too. But I don't know what it is. Is it this? All right, here is the Brown Derby. And check it out, Kobos. Chinese Theater and the Palladium. And the Islander and Don the Beachcomber. And here's the Tropics. That's pretty cool, the Tropics. All right, so let's look at what's happening in here. So we have some, I guess these are costumes or are they real uniforms? Let's look down here. So what does this say? Lucille Ball. And these are authentic. So they, they purchase surplus military uniforms for movies. Pretty cool. Navy tunic. The Hollywood Brown Derby. One in Los Angeles, why not eat in the hat? So you can actually still go down there and see that structure, that round structure of the hat. It is still there from what I believe. I haven't been there in a couple of years, but it is just around the corner from the HMS Bounty. So if you guys are ever in the area for the HMS Bounty, you should go check it out. All right. Looks like the Tiki exhibit is back here. Because of all the lamps and check those um, 
An oceanic arch tiki back there, right there. You can see it peeking through. All right, we're with our friend Angie, who is the director of the museum here, the Hollywood Heritage yeah. Museum. Let's step over since you have like a little bit of like, there we go. How about that? So, <laughs> so tell me about the building we're standing in right now. Sure, so like the building we're standing in is actually known as the Lasky DeMille Barn. Uh, Jesse Lasky was one of our earliest of the film moguls. Um, Cecil B. DeMille, as we all know, is one of the big you know, directors of the start of film. And this is the birthplace of Paramount Pictures. So it started with the barn. With the barn, when was this barn built? The barn was built in 1901, wow. uh, which almost makes it the oldest still standing structure in you know, the district of Hollywood. And I think you mentioned that it had been moved several times. Yep, right? it's moved at least three times we know of. Um, it was originally built on Selma and Vine. So your viewers who know Hollywood um, were the Trader Joe's and the Equinox. Right where the Equinox is is actually the exact spot where the barn was built. Um, and then with their success, they needed to expand their studio. So they built Paramount Studios over on Melrose that we know today. Um, and by horse, they moved the barn over there in 1925. Oh, by horse. Yeah. Wow. wow. And it was the, it served as Paramount's gym up until the 70s. Oh, interesting. I've driven by this barn hundreds of times. Everybody says that. That's the number and, one And thing of course, I, I didn't know the history. And it uh, makes me wonder now, all the things that I've driven by where I don't know yeah. the history. Yeah. So let me ask you about, so obviously this is the original barn built in 1901. Mm -hmm. I can birthplace see. Birthplace of Paramount Pictures. Birthplace oh, of Paramount yes. Pictures. I can see through the roof. Yes, everybody so, says that. So how does that work for you guys with weather? Um, so we have what's called the cedar shingling. And yes, if you were to walk in here and you look up, it looks like stars. There's so many holes, um, but it's old school technology. So it's a barn as it would be. And as soon as moisture or rain hits the air, that all swells. So when we oh, had all the big okay, rainstorms okay. last year, the year before, this was drier than my house. So it swells up and seals. Exactly. Oh, interesting. It's very good at old, um, old technology. But with that said, we shouldn't see as much, so it does need a big restoration. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but everything, all the artifacts, everything is safe because it does Yeah, yeah, see, that's dry. what I was worried about. Yeah, so. yeah. Yeah, very cool. Well, thanks, Andrew. Sure enough, Appreciate thank it. you for supporting us. All right, yeah. <laughs> All right, let's see what we got in here. There's some vintage Trader Vic stuff in here. Coasters and plates and ashtrays. And we've got some of the bowls. And and look at the pirate mug over there in the back. I didn't know it was that small because I don't actually have one of those. I've only seen it in photographs. And some of the vintage menus here. So interestingly enough, the... Um, the, the Ren Clark severed head mug is also small like that, but it looks bigger because in the Book of Tiki, it's it's got its own page and it's depicted really largely, but I, in, in, in real life, and I've seen one in real life because I know a few people who have them, they're actually small, just like that, uh, that pirate mug. All right, let's take a look at what's in this case over here. Oh, look at this glass. That's pretty cool. Thelma Todd's and it. And over here we have some peacock chairs. All right, we're with our friend Eric Link Linksweiler. I'm sorry, Eric. Uh, historian, I would yeah. I say, preservationist, yeah. author, and all author that. Yeah. and all that stuff. He he uh, he just finished his LA Neon tour last night. Yes, yes. Which I bet was kind of tough to do. After 25 years of giving neon cruises for the Museum of Neon Art, it was an emotional evening to say goodbye to my uh, megaphone yeah, yeah it's been a long time I, I i can't imagine how hard that would be because that's that's longer than my kids are aged you yeah. know they're in their 20s and yeah. that'd be that'd be a really tough one but if you guys never got to see that uh i think you can see some of that on my vlog because i recorded one of our tours and i think you'll be doing stuff here and there right like private stuff Private tours are so, still on the table. Oh, I think I might have one coming up at Christmas, fingers crossed. There you go. Okay, so 
we'll see if we can get on that one as well. But right now we are at the Hollywood Heritage Museum and looking at all this cool old Hollywood stuff. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole case here, Trader Vic's collectibles, ephemera. Uh, I mean, there's books, there's menus, there's yep. ashtrays, plates. Yeah. So yeah. tell me about this collection. Where did this come from? Uh, believe it or not, uh, this museum is filled with artifacts from the Hollywood Heritage Archive. Uh, a lot of this stuff is Hollywood Heritage, except for this case. Okay. I, th this case is all Trader Vic's and it's like 95% my collection. Oh. Uh, I've, I've got to focus on Trader Vic's because I adore it. I love the history, yeah, but yeah, also yeah. the design of the menus just puts me You over. know, that's the thing about Trader Vic's is that he really kind of had his own um, style, yeah. like you know, like with the mugs yeah. and with the menus, and I mean, look at the plates. Yeah, look at the ashtrays. The ashtrays have like this gold trim on them. Yeah, yeah, and and they're they're all different. There's like six in yeah. a series, each with its own unique uh, caricature in the middle of it. We have a, a sample of carpeting. Which came from the London Trader Vix. Oh yeah, I remember when that was uh, when people were starting to get little remnants of that. Yeah, and I'm, I'm really kind of glad a, a good friend of ours in Long Beach wound up saving a chunk and framing it and gave gave it, gave it to me as a gift. What so an awesome gift! And of all things, we have cufflinks, and because this is a Hollywood story, uh, these are actually, believe it or not, they're Betty Davis's cufflinks with a little mini hoony on them from Trader wow. Vicks. So that's from Betty Davis's estate. Uh, I think that the, the most stellar thing in here, uh, and there's all, there's a whole lot of stuff. I mean, the recipes uh, the recipes are, are yeah. insane. They're, yeah. they're 1950s to 1970s, and they all came out of one uh, manager's estate in, in Washington state. So a Trader Vicks manager in Washington passed away and I wound up getting his whole archive oh my of Trader God. Vicks. Wow. And it's it's um, all the way from the Savoy in New York City. There's the invitation for the yeah. uh, opening of the Savoy Trader Vicks and the program for the, the Savoy Trader Vicks, wow. plus all of these wow. recipes. But the most stellar thing in here to me is that signed Trader Vic uh, wow. menu. It's wow. falling over at the moment. I apologize. When we moved all the cases, yeah, things yeah, rattled. Yeah. But that particular menu is Trader Vic's uh, Cuba. It, and because oh. it's, it's Havana, Cuba, wow. uh, it, it didn't last for very long. And what Trader Vic wrote on there, he said, no more fine Cuban rum since that stinker Fidel Castro <laughs> took over. <laughs> but he has a hell of a lot of menus left. So that is one of the Cuban menus that he gave away as a gift signed wow. after the fall of Cuba. And next to it is, of all things, a knockoff Trader Vic's tiki mug that was made in Havana, Cuba. And the reason I got that is because I, I, I visited. I wanted to go to that Trader Vic's in Havana. I saw it. It's now El Polynesio. Yeah, yeah. There's Trader Vic's memorabilia yeah. all over the place. And they would not sell you a mug. Right. But if you tip them enough, you get a mug. Yeah, so I wound yeah. up getting that that knockoff Trader Vic mug that was made in Havana, Cuba, to look like a Trader Vic's mug. I know some people who's d who've done that. Who I was about to say, they still use a lot of his glassware yeah. or his cocktail yeah. uh, uh, accoutrement. Yeah. And I know somebody who tipped enough so he could take one home. That's, yeah. that's it. Yeah. The Good. trick is getting to Cuba in the first place. That's the hard part, yeah, yeah. but we yeah. made it. Um, the, the other thing I want to point out in here among all of the awesome, awesome stuff is there's one fake in here. I mean, okay. other than the Cuba mug, that plate, that chart wow, plate, okay. that is actually a fake. And it is a prop from the TV series Mad Men. Oh, you're kidding me. That's a real prop from Mad Men. My friend uh, Javier is a, a collector of Mad Men, and he saved a bunch of these chargers from the set. On the bottom side, it's Crate and Barrel. Oh, and that's the, interesting. On the top side, <laughs> it is the, uh, the decal logo. Don't eat from it, but yeah, uh, uh, it's, yeah. it's nice that he managed to save it, and there we have it. That's so cool. Had to include That's it. so cool. I, I love it. What a great collection. Um, I'm excited to uh, go to the Trader Vic's anniversary in Tokyo next Yeah, month yeah, yeah. And uh, celebrate Tokyo Trader Vic's. That will be. And 
Oh, please yeah. bring. Let me have some souvenirs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll 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 take a look at what you get when yeah. you come back. <laughs> so I'd like I want to talk to you about the other case as well. Can we walk over yeah, there? Let's do it. All right, awesome. Let's go over there. All right, there's another case here full of vintage goodies, which you know a lot of this stuff was documented in books. Like some of it was in the Book of Tiki, and sometimes you see some of this stuff online. So it kind of surprises me the size of some of this stuff. Like the luau, is that a postcard or is that a menu? That's a souvenir menu, but it's, okay. it's one of those tiny to-go ones. Okay. I, I think if you flip it around, it actually does have a, a postcard bright note note on the back. Okay. But I'm glad we have it regardless. It is a fully printed on the inside. Have, you know, like that is one of the things I've never seen in real life. Oh, really? Oh. Yeah, that and... The Sam Seafood stuff I have because I actually frequented Sam Seafood oh, nice. when it was still around so in the last couple of years. The little tiny uh, souvenir photo booklet kind of yeah. surprised me. I yeah. That. yeah. The, the Kelbos is what really shocked me. Kelbos one too, uh, also small. Yeah. So these things, like when you see them photographed, they take up the whole page. So I feel like they're bigger in real life. And then when I see them in real life, they're a lot smaller. The Islander is magnificent, and that Mauna Loa of Hollywood is yeah. totally rare. I've never even seen one before. Yeah, I've never seen that either. So, and the and the, the Shuggies, uh Tropics, I've yeah. never seen that either. The, the wine menu, the reason I adore it is because it has all those photographs. I, I, I can't get enough interiors, but to see Shuggies Tropics with image after image, it's, it's wonderful to me. So where did all of this come from? Is this from someone's collection? This one is probably 75% uh, Hollywood Heritage Museum. It's the museums. The okay. rest of it came from uh, myself and Darren. Mm -hmm. uh, 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 there are certain pieces in here that are, are ours, and I'm very proud of them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but the, the biggest the biggest one that we, we own is basically that top shelf. Okay. Uh, the Pirate's Den is something that we've been celebrating for a long time. In the 1940s, there was a... Uh, uh, a restaurant, a themed restaurant, not tiki, but it's nautical and pirate. It was owned by celebrities and it was um, short lived. It only lasted yeah, for about yeah. three, four years and was gone. So to find anything from that uh, pirate's den is insane. Incredible. That is that is awesome. And it looks like a photo album. You uh, have yeah, there? it's, a, it's okay. an entire photo album. We actually wound up getting uh, two giant scrapbooks that were filled with New York Pirate's Den and Hollywood Pirate's Den wow. as, as maintained by uh, the, the restaurant managers. Okay. So we have letters uh, 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 and also so many souvenirs of, of booklets, menu scraps, the menu itself. And it, it, it's insane to me because they had something that's only seen in this teeny tiny little uh, postcard. Right. They had a right. bottle throwing den. Wow. For, How for, cool is that? For just a few cents. It's like uh, six bottles for 25 cents. During World War II, you could throw empty beer bottles and rum bottles across a bare room to the figures <laughs> of uh, uh, Hitler uh, oh and my God. Andrew Duce. Yeah, How so you cool could, like, is that? Get your World War II aggressions out. Get your out aggressions out. out. Now, this Don the Beachcomber stuff here, mm -hmm. I haven't seen a lot of those either. So this yeah. postcard back here, yeah, and this menu, I, I haven't seen that. I, I have, I'm proud to say those are mine, believe it or not. Yeah, yeah. And uh, hey, eBay comes to the rescue sometimes. Sure, I had to, had sure. To do it. So the Don the Beachcomber postcard is a very heavy die cut. Yeah. And no, I, I've only seen that one. Never, never. I've again. never seen it before. And that Don the Beachcomber menu, it's it is only food. It's not a cocktail menu. It's just Chinese wow. dishes prepared by Cantonese chefs. That's even more rare than the cocktail menus because they they don't exist the way that the cocktail menus do. I love the Seven Seas ashtray. <laughs> Thank you. We, we have two in the museum's collection. Okay. Never um, never seen that one before. The, the, the Seven Seas was important because it is Hollywood. So oh, yeah. The, the, uh, the Hollywood Heritage Museum puts a focus on saving things from the neighborhood itself. And Bob Brooks Seven Seas, they have pieces that go all the way up to the 1970s when it became a discotheque. Okay. And that stuff I wish I could have included, but we were kind of like leaning so towards a particular time zone yeah, with yeah. these. If I could have brought in some 1960s and 70s, I would have. It's crazy for the people out there watching this. If you went to where the Seven Seas is today, it's next door to the Jimmy Kimmel Theater. Yes, that's right. Right next door. And if you went to where the original Don the Beachcomber is today, it's just apartment buildings. So, The other thing I'm going to call out are some of these 
table lamps that we have. The table Beautiful. lamps are, are rare, and, and thankfully we have one on loan from Sam Schwal. And this piece is his. Oh, that's Sam's. That's Sam's. Wow. I'm really grateful that he let us borrow yeah. it. And then next to that, and I, I am honestly just showing off, uh, is a table lamp from the Maikai in Florida. Oh, love it. it. It's something that I'm like, I really want a figural thing in here. And so there it went. Um, I have to admit, I wish we had more uh, tags for everything. But right. there's a thousand right. pieces in this case. Yeah. So we, we just you can't, can't tag see, everything, yeah. We can't yeah. put tags in everything. I, I I kind of need the whole thing to tell the story at, at, yeah. as as yeah. one. We we go for the uh, that late eighteen hundreds museum style, which is throw right. it all right, in right, there. right. Well, the case looks great. <laughs> Thank you. It's awesome. Thanks for sharing.